Hi everybody, it's Sean from Seattle Coffee Gear. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm gonna walk through how to steam silky smooth dairy-free milk. If you're lactose intolerant, vegan, or simply like the taste of plant-based milks, stick around, we'll have some tips for you. Do you steam with non-dairy milk at home? What works best to make your latte art happen? Let us know in the comments. One last thing before we dive in, go ahead and subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss any of our content. There are a lot of non-dairy milks out there. Oat, soy, cashew, hemp, almond, just to name a few. When I'm picking out a non-dairy milk, I like to consider the milk's thickness or viscosity. I want it to be as similar to a dairy-based milk, so that way we can really build up good microfoam. The reason why whole milk steams so well has to do with its protein and fat content. When the milk heats up in the steaming process, the proteins expand, pulling the fats down and creating a beautiful emulsion that is microfoam and what we really like when we make latte art. If a milk is too thin, it's really difficult to maintain microfoam in a drink. And if it's too thick, it's really difficult to build that up in the first place. As a former barista and non-dairy milk lover myself, I prefer to use almond milk or oat milk to get the best resulting microfoam. I always recommend a barista blend of non-dairy milks because those milks use binding agents that emulate the protein expansion that we see in whole milk. They will lengthen and pull the foam down, making a microfoam, uh, and it's much more repeatable time over time. Quality microfoam is super important to make latte art happen. Even with a barista blend non-dairy milk, you can still have some issues. The first big issue that a lot of people experience is an over foaming of light airy bubbles. So when pouring latte art, it looks beautiful up until the giant plop of foam at the end. This is because we are building the foam by eye rather than by ear. When steaming milk, the first part of the process when we start steaming, there is a high pitched shrieking loud sound. And when we lower to perfect aeration, that shrieking sound changes to a paper tearing or a hiss of a tss. By sight, it is super easy to go too far, but if we are just doing it by sound and listening for when that hiss starts, that's exactly where we need to be to build foam for good latte art. The second thing that I see from my customers when steaming non-dairy milk is that it doesn't hold homogeneity as well as dairy-based milks do. If we steam our milk first before pulling our espresso and set it aside, the milk and foam begin to separate. So when it comes to pouring, we are pouring liquid and then foam and can't achieve any latte art. The solution for this is to either pull the espresso first and then steam our milk so we can pour it quickly afterwards, or if you have a fun machine like this one, doing them at the same time so it happens right away. The final issue I see home baristas having with non-dairy milks ultimately comes down to machine maintenance. Non-dairy milks have a higher presence of sugar than dairy-based milks, so they can clog up a steam wand a little bit more seriously. Taking the time to maintain our steam arms by wiping off the outside and very importantly, blowing out the inside of the steam arm, make sure that our machine operates at its peak potential. It's time to put that all together. We're going to be steaming with our Barista Blend Oatly using the Bello Plus. Step one for steaming milk is we're going to put it into our pitcher. We don't want to go past a third full, otherwise it's going to overflow and create a mess at home. Step two before we turn on our steam wand is we're going to fully submerge the tip of the steam arm beneath the surface of the milk. At this point we're going to open up the steam valve all the way into a loud banshee shrieking sound. Right away we can move our pitcher down lower so that the tip of the steam arm reaches the surface of the milk. This will be signified by the switch of a banshee shriek into a paper tearing sound. We live here for about three to five seconds when steaming for a latte, longer for a cappuccino if that's what we're looking to create, and then resubmerge the tip beneath the surface of the milk. Positioning the tip of the steam arm near the edge of a pitcher so that our milk is going to be circulating around, creating a good texture and stopping once it gets to the temperature that we'd like it to be. 
Non-dairy milk feels very similar to steaming dairy-based milk. It all comes down to the precision when building microphone. The process feels the same. However, when the tip of the steam wand gets to the surface of the milk, we need to stop it in that area so we don't overblow the bubbles. It comes down to doing it by ear. So the three main steps that you wanna remember, aerate by ear, steam your milk after you pull your espresso, and keep your equipment clean for the best operation in steaming non-dairy milk. If you want more info about any of the products we used, check the description of this video where you'll find links to the product pages. Speaking of products, check out our recent video all about milk frothing pitchers to help you pick out the best one for yourself. Also in the description, you'll find a link to sign up for our email newsletter. As a thank you, you'll receive a coupon for a 10% discount on one item. There are some exclusions, so be sure to check in with our sales team. Thanks again for watching and keep making coffee you love.